and I was not disappointed. He was professional and kept in touch with me throughout the life, just making sure I was satisfied with everything. I would definitely use Patty Access again, and I highly recommend that anyone looking to do a live video to hire them. Everyone who watched my brother's funeral had good things to say about how much of a good job the videographer did. If you want satisfaction for your money, Patty Access is the way to go.
children are sent to blame When you're the ones who wish the guns down the lane You only cause destruction and the pain But the righteous believes and the rain Love is all I got to give and I'm not to shine Looking for the future, the sky I can't tame Cause I'm so solid as a rock and they just can't stop me now Even when they send their traps, they just can't stop me now People will say this and that, they just can't stop me now Even when they set up roadblocks, they just can't stop me now So they can't keep a good man down Always keep a smile when they want me to frown Keep the vibes and dice to do my crown They will never ever take my crown Who's a place I say no man curse Things get better when they thought it would be worse Here comes the officers asking for a search They found the weapon just down near your dropper Thank you. 
mama, ha, ay mama. Ha. Oh my, oh my, oh mama, don't cry. Gonna keep you by the flame so high. Reaching out to all the mothers in the world. Sometimes it's just the way things are to be, yeah. Thank you, mama, for the nine months you carried me through. All those pain and suffering. No one knows the pressure you bear, just only you. Give you all my love, oh yeah. Thank you, mama, for the nine months you carried me through. All those pain and suffering. No one knows the pressure you bear, just only you. It's my words and my turn. Mama, I will never let you down. I'll never go away. I'll always be around. You know why you do it? Such love that you found. I'm always gonna let you wear that crown. Through the roughest of times, you maintain your calm towers, your only end, yeah, while sheltering me from the storm. And when it's cold, you wrap me in a towel so warm. Oh my, oh my, I'm so glad I was born. Thank you, mama, for the nine months you carried me through. All those pain and suffering. Forever. 
all your time waiting for that second chance for a break that would make it okay there's always some reason to feel not good enough and it's hard at the end of the day I need some distraction What happens when you're rushing is still morning. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the family, I'd like to thank you, all those who are supporting us today. We'd like to welcome you this morning, those who are listening to us online, and those who are close family, close friends. We'd like to welcome you this afternoon as we get ready to celebrate the life of Andre Moise. With this, let's bow our heads as we pray to begin. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for allowing us to see today as we have come here on this occasion it may not be a happy one, but we are all here to support the family and close friends of Andrew Moise. We invite your presence this morning. We ask that you continue to comfort, continue to guide, and continue to bless the families and friends of our dearly beloved. As we begin this 
service here this afternoon, we will ask we ask that your Holy Spirit come close to us this afternoon as we are comforted by his presence. Continue to be with us, bless us, and give us a wonderful afternoon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We shall turn to the first hymn in our leaflet, Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling.
What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God.
and safely say that God is keeping us under his wings. Now we will call on Natasha Pascal to do the first reading. And in this moment, sorry, I'm reading from Isaiah 25, verses 6 to 9. And, the, and in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines, and on the lees of fat things full of marrow of wines, and on the lees will, will refine. And he will destroy in this mountain, the face of the covering, cast over all people, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. And the Lord, rebuke of his people, shall he take away from the earth. For the people have spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. He will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. He will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Amen. We will now welcome Geraldine Marty to do a special rendition.
much better than the blink of a night. Lightning will flash and he will split the sky. And nobody knows the day nor the time. The trumpet will sound and he will arrive. We'll never call. This life is over. Now we'll stand before. Jean Moril to do the eulogy. Jean Moril to do the eulogy. Good morning, all. During his school days, 
Andre would miss school and go to the river to catch crayfish. He did not like school that much, but when he did go to school, it was trouble. When he would misbehave, the teacher would send him to get the stick to beat him. And as a smart boy, he would take the softest one. Even at home with his siblings, there was never a dull moment. Climbing trees, going into the bush, catching fowls. Oh, those were the good days. He would not let the fowls rest. And with his sack, would trap all and get them ready to roast or stew. As the years passed and he got older, he was still the same. Always out and about going to the beach with family and friends. Oh, how he loved the good time and his music. We will miss Creole Day at his house with all the delicious food and the best Kalalu crab. And let's not forget his famous chicken wrap. Those were the best. Even in his old days, he would still put a smile on our faces. You will surely be missed. You were a wonderful wife, wonderful, excuse me, sorry, a wonderful son, brother, cousin, father, husband, friend, and nephew. My Andre, or husband, as he was affectionately called by his wife, was the most kind-hearted, witty, and loving person she had ever known. His broad smile would brighten up the room even in the dark. His wife recalled that they started off as friends by the Grand Riviera bus stop. He would ask her, taxi for you? She would respond, is it for free? And would smile. There were times she would wait to board his bus and sit next to him. If someone beats her to it, she would sit at the back. While driving, he would stare at her through the mirror and smile. The friendship blossomed into love and they started their destiny. He introduced her to river lines and to every nook and cranny of St. Lucia. There was never a dull moment with her husband. He introduced her to gardening and would tease her by saying, Town girl, come let the country boy teach you some garden work. And they would both have a good laugh knowing it was not her thing. He would constantly check on her to ensure she eats. He would say, wifey, what have you eaten for the day? Her response would be, nothing as yet. I will have time. He would tell her, wifey, you need to eat and take care of yourself. If I'm not around, who will take care of you? She recalled the times he would ask her what time she is leaving work as he was constantly in his garden. Her response, I'm leaving at 4.30 p.m. on the dot. He would say, I am leaving the garden just to come for you. When he got there, he would call to say he's outside. By the time she got out, it is 5 p.m. He would give her the eye and ask, what time is it? She would smile and say, love your husband. What I'm going to do with wifey. Other times, she would tell him Amber would drop her home or she will take the bus. He would make her favorite one pot as he was a master chef in his own right. His cooking was the best. After being together for six years, he proposed to her with excitement in his voice when she responded yes. When they tied the knot, it was the best day of their lives. Upon his illness, she cared for her husband with much love and grace that the doctors and nurses marveled and commented by telling her they had never witnessed a like her before. After two years and eight days of marriage, the Lord called him home. He will be forever loved and missed by his wife. I was the mistress of ceremony at his wedding two years ago. Today I'm doing the eulogy. I will surely re- miss the rum punch. Andre surely made the best rum punch. May he rest in perfect eternal peace. Amen. Now we welcome Pastor Albert to do the sermon.
Praise Lord of Pleasant. Good morning to all. Hallelujah. And also, I want the family to know that our prayers are with them. Because in such a time like this, we need to support it to help each other. It's the way that we are able to go. The Bible says that it goes to present help in time of trouble. Yeah. Praise the Lord. This morning, let me see how brief I can be with this sermon. It, I came across a passage of scripture from the book of Ecclesiastes 9 and reading from verse 5. It reads, For the living know that they will die. But the dead do not anything. They have no further rewards. Even the memory of them disappears. What they love as well as what they hate and envied perish low. They no longer have a part in anything that hung on the earth. They no longer have a part in anything that happens on the earth. We need to talk about death this morning because that's what brought us here. Amen. But in spite of that, according to the text, God has given us information that we need to know about. Whenever people receive information, it's for them to do something about it. Am I right? It is for them to act upon it. He let us know this morning... That the living, those of us that are alive, we know, that's what the scripture says, that we are going to die. If you are pretending that you did not have this information, this morning it is in a form of reminding us that our time is coming. We may try to forget, but the reality is we are going to die someday. Sometimes we hear when people pass away suddenly, we hear things like, well, he or she didn't even have the time to call upon God. But is that really the case? That we really or the person really did not have the time to call upon God. Knowing that we live on the face of the earth for 50 years. Some live 40, maybe before the sudden death. Some live 12, 45, 35. So you mean to tell me, I haven't lived 35 years 50 years on the face of the earth. You mean to tell me you couldn't even find a time for your 40 years to call upon God for help? I really do not want to believe that. After God Almighty has graced us with an amount of years to live upon the face of the earth. And sometimes, amen, suddenly, maybe through an accident. What was it that I was doing for 40 years or 45 years? But I want to believe that we had time to do everything else. But the only time... 
The only thing, sorry, that we do not have time or make time for, it is for us to examine our own self and our own standing and our own relationship with God, which is the most important thing. We live our lives on the face of the earth as though some of us, as though there is no tomorrow. As though we are the boss and we control our lives. But I want to report to us this morning that there is someone, amen, who is in charge and in control of our lives. He is the one in the first place who gave life to us. So I am not the boss of my own self. There is someone higher and greater. And his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture says that he is the resurrection and the life. So in other words, after we have lived all of our lives on the face of this earth, I want to report to us, it's not going to be the end. Yes, it is the end of my life on the face of the earth. But life in the presence of God has just begun. And having lived this life and standing before my creator, the one who gave eternal life, what is it that I have to say to him? After he has given me all the instructions that I needed to live, to teach me how to live on the face of the earth. If I did not give heed to his instructions, if I did not give heed to his command, and I went on to live my life uh, the way that pleases me, and I die after death, I stand before him, what is it that I would have to say? What would my defense be? Because the scripture says in the book of Hebrews, it is appointed unto a man once to die and after comes the judgment. So if it was a case that once I, amen, exit this life, uh, it's over for me, why would Hebrews 9.27 let me know as a form of information it is appointed unto us once to die? And people, after death, comes the judgment. We will stand before the Almighty God and give him an account of the life that we live here on earth. Every one of us will stand before him. The text went on to say, the memory of the one of the deceased does not exist on the earth. He do not have the ability to hate. And he does not have the ability to love. All of these qualities that God gave to us uh, once we close our eyes in death cease to exist with us also. So whatever people of God, whatever that we have to do, we need to do it whilst our eyes are open. Whilst our ears, uh, we are still able to hear. Whilst we are still able to speak. Do not allow our eyes to close in death and things that we were supposed to take care of. And we did not fix it. To think or to believe that somebody will fix it after us. Mwen vle fè nou sonje bon matin, amen. La ni an provops ki di, nou leve ek nou ka tan, a yel nou ka di, manye ou fè kouchou. Se kou sa ou ka idomi. The way that you fix your bed, that's how you gonna sleep on it. We also heard, sa ou fè, se sa ou ka iwe. 
What you sow, that shall you reap. Do not think that you will sow and other people will reap for you. Amen. You are the one who sowed. You are the one that is going to reap. And it says, whatever you sow, that shall you reap. If we abhor, the Bible says, unforgiveness in our heart, that is what we sow. And we are going to stand before God with the heart of unforgiveness, people. Do not think for a moment like this that someone, amen, will take our body, our dead, lifeless body, and bring it into a church. And some pastors or some priests will say some magic word and will fix the things that we did not fix. That is why I'm calling on us. The dead knows nothing. But the living know that we are going to die. But before, amen, we depart from this life, people, let us make sure that our lives are right with God. Because he is the one that we will have to stand before. It's best that you forget about everybody else. Because at the end of your life, and at the end of my life, the only one that we will have to stand before is the Almighty God. And sometimes, amen, the people that we are trying to please, they themselves have to stand before God. Sometimes the people that we do not want them to shun us, because we said it to him that we have a relationship. I made it right with God because I do not want to die in this condition. We are afraid that they ridicule and they shun. But may I say to us this morning, it's best that they ridicule me. It is best that they shun me and push me aside. Because I know at the end of the day, at the end of my life, they are not the one that I will have to stand before. Ce n'est pas yo mwen ka ni pou dou bout dou vent. An sel moun mwen ka ni pou dou bout dou vent. Ce bon Dieu. Oh, may I say to us on that day, even lawyers will have to stand for themselves. I said lawyers will have to stand for themselves. Judges and magistrates will have to stand for themselves. On that great day, there will only be one judge. Oh yes. On that great day, there will only be one judge and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Un seul juge. Jusala. C'est qu'il y a Jésus qui. Tout juge. Tout avocat. Qu'il n'y a pas de bout de vin. They are not going to stand before the great judge of the earth as a judge themselves. But they are going to stand before him as one in need of his mercy. And if we did not ask for his mercies whilst we are living on the face of the earth, may I say to us this morning, Amen, when we close our eyes in death, and then we stand before him, before the judgment. It is not time for mercy. It's going to be time for what you sow, what you reap. The memories are forgotten. Andre, I have no knowledge of what we are doing here today. Andre cannot hear what we are saying in this place this morning. Andre, may I say to us, is not here with us today. What we have of Andre is Andre's remain. But Andre this morning, the very first day, Andre, amen, give up the spirit or the ghost. 
the real Andre left the earth. So what we have of Andre is Andre's remain. That is why, amen, in a little while, later on, they're going to cremate the body. Because Andre is no more inside of this dirt. Andre left a couple of days ago. So therefore, if Andre was in this box or in this body, and for after the service to take Andre and to go and burn Andre, we would have been committing murder. Isn't that true? Because we are burning an individual that is alive. So the reason that we are able and we have the heart and the courage to take this body and to cremate it is because we know that Andre does not live in this body anymore. He's not there. He left a couple of days ago. So what we have is his remain. The dirt. La poussière, c'est ça qu'il a. C'est pour ça tout à l'heure. Les points et puis les crimettes, les icaïtounes qui ça. La poussière. And even if we were to take the body and go and bury it at Shock, at um, Grosile, or even view forth, in a couple of years after, it will turn to dust. Because the scripture says, Thus you are, and thus you shall return. La poussière nouye, et nous kay vire tourne la poussière. Nous c'est la poussière la terre, the dirt of the earth. But what is more important about us as human is the spirit that lives in us. We need to let people know that. So the spirit that indwells this body is the real person. That is the real person. And that is the one that will stand before God. He is there lying in this box. He looks real handsome. He still has his two hands. He, too la- he still has his two eyes. Is is, but none of those things are functional. Why? Because Andre is not in this body anymore. He's gone a couple of days ago. And because he left a couple of days ago, whatever Andre did in this life, there is nothing that we can do about it. Yes. It is all about Andre now and the creator. We cannot help him. And I know that if we were able to help Andre, he would not be lying in this box lifeless. You see, it's a helpless situation for us. This is beyond us. This is out of our hands. That is why the scripture says, in the last days, uh, God will call us back. If it were left it for some of us, we will not come back, you know. But we will not be able to resist the call of the powerful one. His name is Jesus. The same way he stood over Lazarus' death. Grave, sorry. He gave us a demonstration. Amen. Of what is going to happen in the last days. If we were to doubt. He gave us, amen, full proof. When he stood over Lazarus' death and grave. And he called him by name. I want to say to you this morning, God knows your name. And it does not matter, amen, who do not know your name and they do not know about you. The one who loves you knows your name. He knows my name. And when the day comes, 
just like Lazarus. It does not matter how many of us carry the same name. When the time comes and he calls, if there are 40,000 Marys in the grave, they are coming. Yes. And each one of them, and may I say to us, we will not be able to bribe him. In spite of some of us carry the same name, we will not be able to bribe him. Amen. This is the only person that we will not be able to bribe. The Lord Jesus Christ. So people, the time is coming. The day is coming. My time is coming. But the thing about it, I really do not know the day. Mwe pa sav ki jou. Si mwe te sav ki jou, mwe te kai mo. Pitet mwe pa te dubu ti si a jodi ya. Ma te kai dubu ti si a because mwe sav, mwe ni information. I have information. Let's say that, okay, it would be um, in January next year, the 14th. God forbid. I'm just giving an example. So around the 12th and the 13th, I would fix myself. Because the 14th is coming. The 14th is my date. So 12, 13, I would be a good boy. I would ask God, I would be on my face every day. I would be crying tears and asking him to help me and to forgive me of all my sins and all the things that I have done in his eyes that were not pleasing to him. I would be crying for two days because the 14 is coming up. But because I do not have such information because i do not know the day nor the hour what he asked me to do what he asked us to do is to make sure that we are ready so the question this morning to us are you ready due to the fact that we do not know we do not have the time we do not have the date are you ready because once this thing show up that is it, you know. Once death show up in your house, once death show up at your home, in your car, as a matter of fact, death has no respect. Yes, Wespe. Ika pwenu nepo kote. Ek nu pasa di tale. Ika pwenu an jade. Nu ale ache manje pou fit fami nou. La mort qui arrive là. Ou en bas flou mou ka beye. Ka pop te ko. Parce que ou ni pou sorti. You have to go to work. You have to attend the wedding. You have to attend the funeral. And sometimes death showed up. Yes. No respect. Y pa ni pies ou espe. It's like bingo. Once your number show up, that's it. We cannot bargain with him. We can't tell him, check me out next week. Nah. We can say it if we want to. But he does not hear that. Nah. Death is a bully. I said, death is a bully. No love whatsoever. But I want to present someone today who loves us. Amen. Someone who loves us in spite of what we have done. Someone who loves us in spite of all of our mess. And don't try to pretend that we do not have mess in our lives. Because the scripture says all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. Amen. We all are messed up people. I said, no, too. Ja messed up konu. And thank God for Jesus who came 
to help us to get out of our mess. On dit merci, bon Dieu, pour Jésus-Christ, qui vient pour nous aider à nous sortir. On dit dans la messe, nous. Mais nous toutes, gagnez. Toutes. Il a dit, et si moi je veux qualifier comme moi, et puis mettre la même chose, je ne vais jamais faire. La Bible dit, we all, we were born in it. If in case you might say to yourself, I never committed one, may I report to you that the Bible said that you were born in it? Yes. You were born in it. Once you were born, I'm a man and a woman, we are born sinners. But thank God for His grace. I say, thank God for His grace, people. God loves us. In spite of all of our wrongdoings, in spite of all what it is that we have done, God loves us. And if only you would trust Him, He can help you to be ready for the time to come. Christmas is a couple of weeks from now. And we are making preparation. And that is wonderful. That is great. But how many of us are sure, guaranteed, that we are going to see the 25th of December. But, we make preparation. Some of us, we have already made our preparation. Things are there. And we are still preparing. And that is good. But the most important one that we need to do, people, is to prepare our soul. That is the most important one. Preparing for Christmas, that is not that important. But let us make sure that our souls are ready, are prepared. In the case that we are called, very important. Because all the preparation that some of us have made for Christmas, if before the 25th hour number comes up, everything will remain there. But I will not be there to enjoy it. Gone. Like the wind. So people, God loves us. All he wants us to do is to be ready. To be ready. Do not leave something that is that important for a man to do because I guarantee you no man will be able to help us after we close our eyes in death. So may God bless us. And may God help us. And may we find the strength and the courage to do what God has called us to do and to make sure that our soul is ready. Amen. Amen.
please stand with me as we say our final prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you once again. As I lift the family before you, we know that God, you are our shepherd. And Father, that you would be a shepherd to them at this moment. That Father God, you will lead them, that you will guide, you will shield them, you will protect them. And Father, you will strengthen them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord God, for the loving hands. At this time, God is not too short to embrace the family. Thank you. Present everyone into your hands as we leave this place. We ask for your protection upon our lives. Those that will be traveling down to view what we place them in your hands, O oh God. And we ask that, Father, you will go before them and that you will shield them from everything, Father God, that will bring, O oh Lord God, pain. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you and enjoy the rest of the day. When we are closing prayer, we are at the end. Now we call on Michelle Charles to do the vote of thanks. Following her will be... That was the benediction. We call on Michelle Charles to do the vote of thanks. And following her will be Rebecca Samuel. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, sisters, a heartfelt thanks and appreciation goes out to all of you from the movies and the family. Thank you for thinking of our family during this difficult time. Thank you so much for the condolences. Your words were so kind and very much appreciated in those, these tough times. Thank you for caring enough to come to the funeral of our and, su and for supporting our family in our time of sorrow. Your presence was appreciated and made this experience a little less difficult. Pastor, thank you for your words of encouragement. Thank you, everyone. As the pastor said, body returns to Rambali for cremation, and the family would like to mourn in private. May God bless you, and do enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks again for coming. We have on the program for closing prayer, Rebecca Samuel. I know she still want to come up to do it. Our great and omnipotent God who art in heaven, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to be part of the celebration of life for our beloved Andre Moise. Thank you for this privilege. We heard your word this morning. Today we heard your word and I ask dear Lord that the hearers will impact the words of wisdom to their lives. As we live dear Lord may your grace go with us and may you give us peace, peace in our life, peace in the life of our families and peace in our community. May you go with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The, the recessional song. Yeah. Our recessional song, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder, I'll Be There. We call the Paul Bearers. <laughs>
Cause you make my life complete It's only you Only you where I want to Don't you know So you know Never seen a girl that can do the things The things you know So you know Martina, I would like to say thank you to the guys from Paddy Access, especially Jermaine, for a job well done. I called him two days before my brother's funeral to do a live video and I was not disappointed. He was professional and kept in touch with me throughout the live, just making sure I was satisfied with everything. I would definitely use Paddy Access again and I highly recommend that anyone looking to do a live video to hire them. Everyone who watched my brother's funeral had good things to say about how much of a good job the videographer did. If you want satisfaction for your money, Patty Access is the way to go.